Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Place of Binding of Isaac Advert Plus. Um, one win in a row, because I'm bad now. Or alternatively, because we got Tiny Planet with Curse of the Blind. That's video ball, baby. Z3R63YY1. Let me just say preemptively, I'm recording this on New Year's Eve 2019. I hope you have a good New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. You might be saying NL. This is the New Year's Eve is a day for rest, relaxation. You're in the holidays. Why are you working? I, I don't respect the back half of the holiday season. I choose not to observe it. Christmas Eve, Christmas Boxing Day. Yes. New Year's Eve. A little like New Year's Eve evening, sure. New Year's Eve morning, nah, here's the thing, it's like, uh, if you're taking the day, which is, I'm sure, the most common option, I don't blame you. Like, get it, you know? You don't get that many days off, enjoy it. For me, I just had last Tuesday, oh, I'll take this, just had last Tuesday, and last Wednesday largely off. It's not that I don't want the day off, it's just like I wish they would put that day off in another part of the year. In another part of the world. In a beautiful March. In a beautiful June. We don't, there's months of the year that get like no day off whatsoever. In terms of at least like a government mandated holiday. How come your month lets you have like five holidays? Anyway, so that's why I'm working the morning of New Year's Eve. And I, I don't dislike the holiday of New Year's. I respect it on a symbolic level, especially. It does have a lot of the same problems that I have with the Halloween and the St. Patrick's Day. Largely um, copious amounts of alcohol consumption masquerading as some kind of like, well, you got it, it's New Year's sort of like sentiment. But I, it also has a, elements of it that I enjoy for sure. Um, obviously, we cannot take this. Do you think maybe? No, that would have found it. Maybe here? Okay. Not okay. Moving on. <laughs> I uh, honestly give me a random Wednesday in March is all I'm saying. I don't respect it as as much. I would respect it more if it was later. That's why I think we as uh, you know North American society, I think we should just move to the Lunar New Year. You know the Chinese New Year. And I know what you're saying. No, New Year is January 1st. That's the first day on the calendar. Let me hit you with something that might blow your mind. January 1st being the first day of the year is arbitrary. Someone decided that a long, long time ago. We could make it February 23rd. Would there be an adjustment period? Oh, yes. But the most important part is not the billions and billions of dollars and, you know, labor hours poured in to fix all of our computer systems that uh, look to January 1st as the dawn of a new year for things like billing and etc, etc. The important thing is that it would move a couple of days off out of this very crowded Christmas corridor and move them into February where you don't get any time off at all and people are sad, you know? There is a holiday in February, Valentine's Day. Not a holiday. You don't get the day off, and it's stressful for a lot of people. Plus, reservations so crowded <laughs> at dinner time. Who needs it, dude? Okay, we'll take Little Brim for sure. Um. Anyway, that's my two cents. I'm telling you, if I ever run for office, it's going to be very much on the platform of uh, optimizing the holidays. I don't, uh, to be fair, I didn't really think about this. January also doesn't have any holidays, but uh, you know, you, you kind of, you just had Christmas. It's basically in January. December is a month that largely does not exist anyway. You spend the whole month eating. 
I, I, we had to. We absolutely had to. I'll tell you one thing. I'm extremely glad I did not go to the curse room. I did think about it. I thought, maybe we'll go to the curse room. The odds of us, you know, finding something good are decent. And uh, on top of that, you know, maybe... Uh, help me. <laughs> maybe, just maybe... We could, uh, you know, pick up something that would transform our run. Instead, I thought, let's wait it out. And uh, I have never been happier to have missed out on an opportunity. Because we would have been possibly one hit away from disaster. Still not quite settled on this run, but doing pretty well. We're getting there. How am I doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Um, I, I switched to a new gym. And I'm, it's, it's a little weird, you know on Lost, when they meet the people from the other side of the island? The tail section survivors, or I don't know, they might be the... Look, I haven't seen the show, I'm mostly going off season two of The Office when Dwight goes, you know on Lost, when they met the others. <laughs> I'm stealing his joke and making it my own, but now I'm referencing a very beloved show, so people are gonna be like, he's still my dude. Um... You know, I know gym etiquette, but I don't know this gym etiquette, so I've been kind of like, you know, silently observing people in the gym trying to figure out, like, hey, do you guys do things differently than uh, we do in my gym? Or my old gym, I should say. The answer so far appears to be no. Which makes perfect sense. But I was trying to figure out, you know, my old gym, it's like going to a new school, which is a, something I never had to experience except for, you know, like when I went to high school. I, I, I stayed at the same elementary school for my entire, uh, for my entire elementary school career. Hold on, let's focus here. Certainly. We should have done this differently with uh, Judas's Shadow. But I think I'm going to let it ride like this, honestly. I don't really want to get Judas a Shadow and then just append it to the end. I think the Spirit Heart, I know it sounds bizarre, but I think the Spirit Heart might be worth more. Okay, just keep it moving for now. Um, you know, I, I would imagine that at schools, you know, throughout uh, at least, you know, the same, like, open it please? You can't? Okay, well that's going to waste a big chunk of this. Probably, yes, the final chunk of that. Imagine they do things pretty similarly. You know, what? what's the difference going to be? Oh, here... At our school, the funniest punchline is bruh. At your old school, the funniest punchline was bro? This is ridiculous. Some me gaps can't be mended. <laughs> but still, you know, you, you get comfortable. I know how to not cause a fuss in my gym. I was worried, like... This is, I don't know if other people feel this level of anxiety, I'm sure they do, but I have to say that I'm not sure if other people do, just in case what I'm about to say is so weird that it really throws you for a loop, you know? But, you know, there's a water fountain, and there's two spouts coming out of the water fountain. One is to fill the water bottles up, and one is usually for your mouth. I saw, like, 30 people fill their water, uh, their water bottles up. I saw nobody actually just drink from the other part of the fountain. So I was like, maybe that's like for bottle use only. Maybe like I missed a memo that it's unhygienic to drink from a water fountain. So we don't allow you to do that. And that other spout is just like a vestige of a previous time. So I went up very gingerly. Took a look around to see if people were like, oh my god, is he gonna drink out of the water fountain? Then I drank out of the water fountain, and of course it was totally fine. So like, on the outside, I'm a, like a 205 pound man who is, you know... I'm not gonna say I look like I'm in shape, but I look like, you know... Some of the mass that I have is functional. <laughs> it really depends. Let me put it this way. If I was 14, I would have been like, I'm a fatty. But I think if I'm 50, I would have been like, yo, dude, that guy is yoked. 
Because when I was 14, the height of masculinity was Chad Michael Murray's body from the Paris Hilton film House of Wax. Nowadays, I'm like, yo, give me that half Thor Bjornsson physique. Okay, please let me out of here. Of course, I will never get the half Thor Bjornsson physique um, because I am not six foot seven. <laughs> might have to, might have to settle for quarter Thor. I know half means water. Don't start with me. Anyway, it is funny because in my head, you know, I've had like this same level of. Uh, I don't want to call it anxiety. It's just because I think you know real anxiety is is something different. But I've had this level of uh, preoccupation with like social norms since I was like nine years old. And I think for all of us, like in our heads, sometimes we're still like you know little kids. Like when I think about the way that I see myself, if there's no mirror around. I see myself now, like, I feel the same as I did when I was, like, you know, 16 or 17, with, like, some noted changes. But then, like, I feel like I'm, you know, I have the worries of a baby sometimes, and then I look in the mirror and I'm like, good lord, I'm actually, like, a full-grown adult human. <laughs> Probably a little overgrown, to be honest. How the heck did we get here? Because when you're, I think when you're younger, you operate on the assumption that, you know, any any little personality quirks that are undesirable that you've got when you're you know 15, they just magically get ironed out as a, you know you become an adult. Not the case. If anything, I'm not saying people get worse as they age, but most people's lives tend to get a little bit harder as they age, and you know it, it, don't shoot the messenger on this one. But for the most part, uh, the with the experiences in my life, this is just anecdotal. But I think the easier your life is, the better your life is going, the easier it is to be a good person. The more under stress you are, the harder you're going to find, you know, you're, you're going to put that kind of stuff on the back burner to a greater degree. Not to say that stress will make you a terrible person, but, you know, there's a reason people tend to be nicer on vacation than, you know, on Mondays. You know what I mean? If anything, becoming an adult kind of illuminates, I think, some kind of personality quirks you might not have even noticed you had. Because they only surface under periods of relative duress. You know what I mean? Like, you might not know some of your friends, and this is not based on real life, I'm just picking something out of a hat, basically. Some of your friends or family members might be, like, real greedy. But you haven't had to go through an inheritance spat yet, so you don't know. <laughs> they see hey i they seem totally normal but then you know after uh uncle buffett died everybody lost their freaking minds we need to go back for this key at the very least this is gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be a fast one prepare yourselves anyway so you know you gotta learn the new language of a place you gotta learn the new language of a gym after like a month you'll you'll be It'll feel like a second home. Even took me a bit just to figure out the squat rack. It was like learning a new accent. I was like, my squat rack has little thin metal bars for safeties. Yours has these big... Uh... Anyway, you don't, you don't care. <laughs> it's fine. I also realized when I went to this new gym that uh, the people who used my previous gym were not that strong. I was under the impression that those people were of average gym goer strength and I had just surpassed them in terms of strength and was some kind of like, you know, unbelievable genetically gifted lifter. Then I went to this gym and I was like, oh, these are real strong people. This is the gym where the actual strong people go. Uh, we have a new nomination for the worst use of Mega ever in history. I believe we killed two enemies with it. It's a new moon record. Now, we do want money. Money would help. I mean, what do we care? We have nine lives, ten spirit hearts, and mega. So, I, I, forgive me. And little brim, for that matter. Forgive me. And holy mantle. Don't forget about holy mantle. Uh, but forgive me. I don't think, um, you know, money equals power is going to be the dominant element on my run. It might be fifth or sixth. 
apart from that, I mean, it's been a good week, honestly. Like, uh, I put out my roguelite uh, tier list. And all you need to know... I should have been going to the curse rooms since I got Holy Mantle. All you need to know... Is, hey, you should watch it. It's like half an hour and uh, is. I mean, I, I'm not going to say the video is good because that's like... I don't know, it depends what you're interested in. If you're interested in watching a man who has played all of these roguelites rank them, then, uh, yeah, it's a good video. How could it not be? All you need to know is that it's a video that could potentially be rife with controversy because of the fact that people's feelings might get hurt based on where you place games. Um, but it has a better like-to-dislike ratio than your average Isaac episode. So just... Let that percolate in the old Cerebrum for a bit. We made a, a video that could hurt people's feelings, and people were like, yeah, give me more. <laughs> it's been fun making new kind of content for YouTube. It's kind of like, uh, I mean, I've talked about it on a few Isaac episodes recently, but it's kind of like, you know, reinvigorated uh, my, my desire to make content, you know? I'm not saying, you know, that the, the meme videos are, you know, where I want... Because you, you always have to be careful on the internet. If you're ever like, you know, I like thing. People are like, oh, really? You like things? So that's all you're ever going to do in the future? Like if you eat a burrito, you're like, well, you couldn't eat a burrito for every meal. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I could, but you shouldn't. You're right. <laughs> you know, just as a little bit of cayenne pepper thrown into the mix, I think it's a, it's a nice touch. But it's, let me put it this way, it's gotten to the point now, I've been doing some video editing. Now, it is hard for me to find time, or not time, but opportunity, I guess I should say, for where to use the video editing software on YouTube, because like, look, I'm not going to edit an Isaac episode. What's, when I kill a boss, I'm going to put in like the Call of Duty, like, you know, hit markers or something like that, it's not going to happen. But I have gotten... I've, I've been using some video editing software. And it feels good. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about this side of things again. Sometimes all it takes is trying some new stuff and you... You know, reignite the stuff that interested you in the first place. Please don't take forever to die. Because I would like you to... All get killed by Mega instead of only like two-thirds of you getting killed by Mega. Anyway. Whatever, we, we got it. Just doing new stuff has been a lot of fun. And the roguelite tier list video is very flattering to me. It was, like, by my standards, it was insanely popular. Like, definitely one of the most popular videos I've made in the past year or two. Um, and certainly, like, one of the most popular original videos I've made ever. Because, like, the other videos that are, like, the most popular ever, without being disrespectful to myself, I have almost nothing to do with it. He's like, new Isaac DLC came out, lots of people are interested. This is one where I was like, I concocted the idea, and it did well. Which is more flattering, even though I'm flattered in both ways on this one. So yeah, I've been looking to make more stuff like that, without forcing it, you know? I want it to feel uh, natural, I don't want to just start doing, you know? Hey, tier list Wednesdays, we're going to be ranking... Uh, Chain hardware stores. S tier, Home Depot, their self-checkout works better than any self-checkout I've ever seen in my life. This is not a joke, by the way. When we were moving, we went to Home Depot a few times. I was stunned by the, the relative goodness of their self-checkout as compared to every other, like, particularly grocery store I've ever been to. D tier, Canadian Tire. I don't get it. What are you? Do you sell hardware supplies or plastic slides? It's been nice to try new stuff. If you watch that tier list video, thank you. There are a few common questions. The most common question is, uh, by far, where are Risk of Rain and Risk of Rain 2 on the list? Look, I made some executive decisions with the programming on that list. The reason I didn't put Risk of Rain and Risk of Rain 2 on the list is because I only played, like, I don't know, less than 10 hours of Risk of Rain. And I think we're probably at less than 10 hours of Risk of Rain 2. Every other game on the list, I have like at least 50 hours in. 
I know you're like, well, what about Dead Cells? I'll check it right now. I think I got like 100 hours in Dead Cells. People just assume I played zero because I don't like it as much as the average person. Okay, I got 68 hours in Dead Cells, but still. It's, it's a relative lot. Anyway, so that was... He, what I didn't want to do was put every roguelite on the list, even if I didn't have that much, you know, authority on it. And then be like, well, this is a D tier. People, some people have said, like, I would have rather he put those games on the list and put them in the D tier. It would have felt more authentic. And I'm like, no, trust me, I've been doing this a long time. Mm, my guess is that you are lying to yourself. You would not have preferred that. <laughs> Instead of being like, where are these games on the list? A lot of comments would have been like, this guy is an absolute idiot for putting these games in this position when they're some of the best ever. And really, what it comes down to is not that, like, I think those games are bad, but I don't want to take the heat for saying that they're bad. It's just they never really grabbed me, so I don't have anything meaningful to say about them. Whereas the other ones, I, I have a lot of, in my opinion, meaningful stuff to say. So that's the big thing there. And then the other one is, why was Isaac in the A tier instead of the S tier? And I think you have valid points in both directions going on this one. This seems to have inspired a lot of uh, uh, constructive debate. Not criticism, but debate. Because some people are like, it should be in the S tier. He's, he's played 3,600 hours of it. It's just lost its shine because, you know, it's like his normal job. Uh, I disagree with that, but I, I understand your reasoning. And for some people, and in some situations... That's how you judge the quality of a video game, right? Or you use Legacy, you know, it inspired so many games, it has to be in the S tier. Um, and I, there is a, probably an argument to be made for like... Power I forgot we had Holy Mantle there. There's probably an argument to be made for, you know, how could you play 3600 hours of a game that's not S tier. But, I also think that... I mean... Is, is my job, so like, how could you go to work at your job for 40 hours a week if it wasn't S tier? You know what I mean? But most people, <laughs> most people aren't beholden to that same level of, uh, you know, well, they don't have the same kind of condition applied there. And the second thing is, as, although I'm like loath to admit it, I do think that some of the bloat in Isaac has, has taken it from like, a, uh, from S tier to A tier, to be honest. And it's not really... It's a combination of things. A lot of people uh, say, like... You know, Afterbirth Plus added too much stuff to the game that is redundant. Or or even, like, player antagonistic. Like, I, I've... The n number one thing I always complain about is... The, like, pills. Useless items. Like, I'm not, it's not even bad pills that bother me. It's, uh, it's pills that do nothing but just clog up the pool. That's, that's the most annoying of all the elements there. Like, retrovision is not a bad pill in the sense that it, like, hurts you. It's just a waste of time. Like, if they had dropped nothing, I would be happier. But anyway, let's not go down that road. That's not really where I want to be. But the other thing people have complained about a lot is is curses, and I'm with them a thousand percent. I think Curse of the Blind is fun because it's annoying, and it forces you to like weigh some risks, you know, if you're in a touchy situation. Apart from that, like, Curse of Darkness is just tedious. Whatever, we don't need Mr. Mr. Boom, Mr. Mega. Take me out, dude. Okay, well, I guess we'll get Mr. Mega. <laughs> Curse of Darkness, Curse of the Lost, like, not being able to see the map. Those just, they strike me as, like, anti-player choices. But I, I think on top of the, the perceived negativity there, I, or, you know, it not being super fun, it, it, those curses, that is. I also think it's just, you know, not that the genre has passed Isaac by, because I don't believe that that's the case at all. But, uh, you know, some of the games that have come out after Isaac have learned lessons that Isaac couldn't have learned from itself because it is itself. You know what I mean? You know, Isaac invented so many mechanics that became, uh, you know, standard for roguelites. 
that I think they, uh, you know, they inevitably made mistakes because, you know, they're, they were first to market in some ways. Um, or early to market, at the very least. Uh, so as a result, you know, they did things in, in ways that allowed, you know, games that came after them to learn some lessons about like, oh, people do not like that. <laughs> now that being said, of all the games on the, on the roguelite tier list, Isaac is the one that I find most replayable. But I do think, you know, I think it's an A tier instead of an S tier state right now. I'm hopeful that it can get back to that S tier with uh, Repentance or who knows, like with the sequel in the future. And, you know, it's not an insult to say something is an A instead of an S, I think, but some people took it the wrong way. Some people took it a little personally, which is fine. You know, it's a game that's inspired a lot of... A lot of fervor, for sure. And I'm a big fan of Isaac. Probably a bigger fan than you are, to be honest. Unless you're Cobalt Streak. But even... <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if you ask Cobalt Streak or Sinvicta, they would also be like, Yeah, it's got problems. Please let me out. It does get elevated into the S tier. Because it's such a great banter. Or Engine 4 banter, I should say. No other game have I ever reached the, the point of mindlessness where I can banter like Isaac while still having some connection and engagement to the actual, like, game systems on display. It's a very... it's a mercurial concoction. Anyway, suffice it to say, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that video. The only other controversial part I thought was, like, People were like, Dead Cells shouldn't be in the C tier. And I'm like, I know, I wish they made it better too. <laughs> I'm joking. Like I said at the start of that video, every game on the list is like an A to S tier video game just by making the list. It's like the Miss Universe pageant. You already had to win your local uh, pageant, then your regional, then your national pageant just to be there. But it's just, you know. Never really, it, it didn't stick with me as much, let's put it that way. Why wouldn't you go in and just grab the battery, whatever. I mean, the run is still obviously under control. Um, but suffice it to say, it's been, been a fun time making some, you know, new styled content on YouTube. And also, Hades. How good is Hades? I put it in the A tier on the, the list, and I felt weird about it, because I feel like there's, you know, recency bias. Like, it's the new hotness, so of course I'm possibly overrating it. But at the same time, I also feel like there's, like, recency, recency bias, where you, like, walk out of a movie or, you know, you're playing a game, and you're like, oh, this is a 10 out of 10. But then your intellectual brain kicks in, and you're like, well, it's probably not a 10 out of 10, it's probably a 6. So you give it a 6. And then, like, a year later, you're like, no, I was right. That was, like, a 9 or a 10. So I just went with my heart. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Obviously, radio course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See you.